Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The next next topic in chapter number two is that of position vectors. Uh, so, position vectors, uh, as the name suggests, represent positions in space with respect to some origin. Okay. So, first of all, we have to understand that when we are using these x, y, z uh, axes, we always use them in right-handed coordinate we uh, right-handed system okay what does a right-handed system means that x and y if we curl our fingers around x and y the z points is in the in the thumb direction if we curl the fingers of our right hand from x axis to the y axis then the z is in the direction of our thumb this is what a right-handed system means so let me explain that by an example so if I have these axes and I have X here Y here and Z here this is not a right-handed system okay how do we know that uh, because if we curl our fingers from X to Y our right hand then z x the our thumb would be pointing downwards okay so we expect that the z should be positive downwards but over here i have drawn it positive upwards okay so let's look at another another example so what if we had an axis like this okay so we have x here and then y here so using right hand rule if i curl my fingers from x to y my thumb points in the on the right side so i get z here okay so this is acceptable this is a correct right handed so right handed coordinate system however this is not correct because this is left handed coordinate system okay um, at this point it doesn't really make difference make a difference but uh, we would soon learn about cross products and over here this different really difference really matters okay so for all of our discussion in this book and hopefully for the rest of your engineering we would be using a right hand coordinate system okay so position vectors are these vectors which define the position of a point relative to some origin okay so for example if I have a point P in space so this point P has coordinates X Y and Z but I can represent a vector R from origin to this point P which would just be equal to X i hat Y j hat plus Z k hat okay so this R vector is the position vector of the point P with respect to origin okay so the statement here is first of all position vectors are so they need a point and they need a reference point also so we can find position vector with respect to origin or we can find position vectors with respect to some other point in space okay so let's look at this example here so we have an origin o and this point b so sometimes position vectors are referred to as ob so this is the position vector so i want to find this position vector ob okay so I know just from looking at the diagram that I have to travel uh, 4 plus 2 6 meters in the positive x axis to get to this point then I have to move minus 1 meters in the y axis to get to this point and then positive 4 meters to get to this point so I can say that the position vector OB is equal to 6 i hat plus or should I say minus 
वन जे हैट प्लस फोर के हैट दिस इज अ पोजिशन वैक्टर फॉर ओ बी वी कैन डू द सेम एक्सरसाइज फॉर ए ऑल्सो सो पोजिशन वैक्टर ओ ए इज इक्वल टू सो वी हैव टू ट्रेवल फोर मीटर्स टू इन द एक्स एक्सिस टू इन द वाई एक्सिस सो आई वुड से फोर आई हैट प्लस टू जे हैट बट नाउ इन द के डायरेक्शन इन द जी एक्सिस वी हैव टू गो डाउन अदर देन अप सो वी गेट माइनस सिक्स के हैट सो लेट मी जस्ट ड्रॉ द वैक्टर्स हेयर ऑल्सो सो दिस पोजिशन वैक्टर इज दिस वैक्टर very good drawing this is the vector from this so this is ob and this vector is the vector from here to here okay so i hope this is clear okay so with respect to position vectors i found a really good video so it's uh, exactly relevant to what we are trying to do so let me just run the video for you guys uh, position vectors so position vectors are basically a vector that tells you how to get from one place to another not too complicated right or it shouldn't be at least so let's say we've got some point out here in space point I don't know, A, to be super creative about it. So we have some point A at 3, 2. Now it shouldn't take too much of a stretch to say, okay, well, I can draw a vector to that position, and I can call that vector R A. Now if I wanted to write that in the I hat, J hat notation, I could say that's at 3, I hat, plus 2, J hat, position vector, right? Not too crazy. So these are all position vectors. I can do something different. I could go back to, and I could go up one, and I could call that point B at negative two, one. And then if I wanted to draw in the position vector from the origin, maybe I should be more specific about that. The position vector from the origin would be, um, where can I put it? Um, Rb would be negative 2 i hat plus 1 j hat, but rather than of course saying 1 j hat, we could just say plus j hat. Okay? So that's point B. B. Okay? So there's that. Now what we can do is we can create a vector that goes from A to B. From A to B. A to B. And the notation that we'll use for this is to say r from a to b. Now I can count, and I can say, okay, it's going to go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to go back 5, and it's going to go down 1, just by counting the blocks or whatever. But there's a better way to do this, because this would be very, very annoying and even, yeah. It's going to get bad, especially if we go into 3D. Um, so what we want to do is create a general formula that we can use to, to um, correlate position vectors and position from one to the other. So let's take a look and think about this as being the triangle rule. So I could say, well, I start here, and I go here, and then I go here. So my resultant is this guy, right? You see that as the triangle rule? So let's say I do this, and then I do this. So here's my resultant, okay? Blah, blah, resultant, this should be this should be reasonably straightforward at this point for you. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna go R A, and then I'm gonna go A to B, and that should give me my resultant there. Make sense? So if I wanna know, well, how would I find this position vector in general, I can just solve for it by subtracting R A from both sides. Oops. Now, I actually thoroughly recommend that you remember how to derive this little formula 
than trying to memorize it because every time I've tried to memorize this, I always memorize it backwards and then my A's and the B's are in the wrong place and stuff like that. So I strongly recommend just actually learning it. Wow, crazy. Um, then, then memorizing it because memorization is is only sometimes useful. Some things you're good to memorize, but I wouldn't call this one of them. And that's mainly mainly because I I can't seem to figure it out. So again, you wanna if you're trying to think about how this works, draw yourself. And if you're on a test, like oh man, I forgot the order. Don't worry about the order. Just say if I start here and I go from here to here, there's my resultant. So if I start at the origin, if I go to A, and then I go from A to B. I end up at B. And to me, this makes a lot more sense to memorize it this way than to try to memorize it that way. And again, not really memorize, I'm just talking my way through it. Okay? So that's your justification or this way for um, position vectors. And if you want to go check, you can see that if we use this formula here, we get the value for RAB above. We would get um, RAB is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and write it yeah, like this, minus 3i hat plus 2j hat, and that gives me, oh, I'm actually working it all out, good for me, um, blah, 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 um, minus 5 i hat, except I can't distribute the negative because I'm apparently incapable of basic algebra, there we go, good, okay, so, um, and this works in 3D as well, this is just a good little, a good little refresher on position vectors and, uh, and how they work. What's also important to note is that this works in reverse. So I could also say, well, if I start at B, oops, if I start at B and I go from B to A, I end up at A, right? Would that make sense? If I start at B and I go from B to A, then my resultant is I end up at A. This is apparently B. This is apparently A in my little imagination. So um, it works in reverse as well, which is again why I found memorizing the formula isn't really that helpful because you know you could say, well, I start at C and then I go from C to D and then I go from D to E and I end up at E. Does that kind of make sense? So um, in this R to B, B to A thing, um, we basically use the same picture that we had up here except our, um, so this would be, as it's pictured, this would be R from A to B, right? Um, but if I took this and I drew it the opposite direction, if I drew it, oh, I hate to mess it up, it's so pretty. Ah, uh, well, so I'll just kind of sketch it over here. So I could say that I could go to A, well, I could, here's B. So I could say that I go to B, and then I go from B to A and then I end up at A. So this would be R from B to A. These down here. This down here next to our picture. Okay. So when we say R from B to A, we're basically saying it's R from A to B except the other direction. Okay. So again, don't, don't get too caught up in everything, but know that the general convention is that we start here and that's where we end. So that's the, the head, I suppose, and that's the I guess it depends on what you call head and tail. Um, I like to use start and finish. This is where we start, and this is where we finish. And usually if you see the letter by itself, that means you're starting from the origin. So the basic concept of position vectors is to find the vector between two given points in space. So this is the concept that has been very uh, clearly explained in the video that you guys just watched. Uh, so just to reiterate, this vector r is what in the video they were calling r b a r a b sorry vector from position a to position b so let me just write it down so this vector is just r a b okay and this is nothing but r b minus R A, okay. And uh, when we simplify this, we get the x component is just the difference of the x components of B and A. The y component is just the difference of the y components of B and A. Similarly for Z, okay. So uh, I hope this point is clear. So why are position vectors useful? So uh, the simple answer is that they are useful because sometimes the force is directed along some position. Okay, 
So, uh, we look at this example here an elastic rubber band is attached to points A and B as shown in figure. Uh, this is the figure. Determine its length and its direction measured from A towards B. Okay. So, we want to measure the length of this rubber band and we want to measure the direction of this rubber band because now this uh, because of this rubber band this point is being pulled by this point in the direction of the rubber band. So, if I were to draw the forces then I know that the force on there will be a force in this direction and there will be a force in this direction. Okay. So, a lot of times the force is directed in the direction of a position vector. Okay. So, to find the force we need to find the position vector. Okay. So, uh, again we want to find the uh, so, we would like to find, let me just draw the vector here. So, we start from this point and we end at this point. Okay. So, this may be a little thick. We start at this point and end at this point. And this is the vector we call, this is R A B. Okay and we want to find R A B. So, previously we know that R A B is just R B minus R A. Okay? And I can just read off the value of R B. So, R B has a positive x component which is 2 meters. So, R B is just equal to 2 I had sorry not 3 2. So, this 2 I had and the uh, 2 sorry 2 J hat and the I hat component is in negative. So, that is minus 2 I hat and plus 3 K hat. So, just to reiterate, uh, this is the position vector R B. How do we know that? So, you have we want we have to go 2 meters towards the y axis, then minus 2 meters towards the x axis in the direction of x axis, and 3 meters in the z axis to get to this point from origin. So, this is the vector from origin to B. Okay. So, this is R B and we want to subtract R A. So, R A lies in the x z plane. So, it has no y component. So, its x component is 1. So, it is 1 i hat and then minus 3 k hat. Okay? And there is no j component because it lies in the x z plane. So, now we can just simplify and we get 2 minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 minus 3 I hat and plus 2 J hat plus 6 K hat. Okay. So, this is the vector from point A to P which we call R A B. But now, the question asks us about the direction and the length. So, the length of this vector R A B is just the magnitude. This is the length and it is equal to just the square root of 3 squared which is 9 plus 4 squared which is 16 uh, plus 2 squared which is 4 plus 6 squared which is 36 okay and 36 plus 4 is 40 plus 9 equals 49 so this is equal to 7 meters so first of all the length is equal to 7 meters the second thing we want to know is the direction okay so to determine the direction we can just calculate the three angles 
alpha so alpha is going to be equal to uh, cos inverse of 3 minus sign divided by 7 similarly we can find beta uh, sorry similarly we can find beta and gamma so that would determine the direction of the position vector beta and gamma okay um, so uh, to calculate the length of this vector first of all we found the vector in cartesian coordinates and then we calculated the length and to calculate to determine the di direction we can just calculate the three angles cartesian angles that we have studied in previous videos okay so so now we get to using position vectors uh, to calculate force directed along a line so uh, so we look at this example where the hook is connected to uh, there is a string connected from point a to b and there is some force f along the direction of this this string okay so let's assume that we know that the magnitude of f is 100 newtons okay so the magnitude of f is 100 newtons and we want to find the cut the force into in cartesian form okay so first thing i notice is that the direction of the force is going to be the direction of rab okay so i can say that i can write this force f as the magnitude times the unit vector of the force okay so this is the unit vector of the force okay but i already know that because this force is directed in the same direction as the unit as the position vector r a b so the unit vector of for force is the same as the unit vector from a to b okay and this unit vector i can calculate okay this is nothing but the vector r a b divided by r a b magnitude so this is the method to find the force directed along a line okay so we uh, use the magnitude of the force that is given to us and for direction we just use the unit vector of the position vector okay so this here is the unit vector of the position vector u and this is the magnitude of the force okay i hope this is also clear okay so just to summarize about unit vectors first of all unit vector position vectors locate one point in space relative to another the easiest way to formulate the components of a position vector is to determine the distance and direction that must be traveled along x y and z directions going from the tail to the head of the vector okay so as we did uh, in our previous uh, calculations and to find the force acting along a direction of a position vector we use this formula where this f is the magnitude of the force and this unit vector is the uh, r vector divided by the magnitude of r okay so these points would get more clear uh, when we solve some examples okay so uh, this is an example from the book again uh, it says that the roof is supported by cables as shown in the photo if the cables exert a force fab of 100 newtons and fac of 120 newtons 
So there is a force along this string equal to 100 newtons and there is a force along this string equals 220 newton. Determine the resultant force acting at A, express the result into Cartesian vectors. Okay? So we want to find the resultant force in terms of Cartesian vectors. Okay? So let's start. So to find the resultant force, so first of all it is easy to see that the resultant force is just going to be equal to Fa plus Fb because there are only two forces acting on the hook that we know of. Okay. To find Fa we would first need to find the position vector Rab. Okay. So Rab is the vector when we go from A to this point B. So this is our origin. So to go from A to B first we have to go minus 4 meters in the z direction and then 4 meters in the x direction. Okay. So I can say this is 4 i hat minus 4 k hat. So this is RAB. Uh, and we can also find RAC. To get to this point, first of all we have to get to this point and then we have to travel 2 meters in the y direction. So we can say this is 4 i hat plus 2 j hat plus 4 k hat. Okay. Again nothing new here. Just using the same concepts that we have derived in the previous slides. To calculate the position vectors okay but to find these forces I need the unit vectors so I can just say now that FA is nothing but the magnitude of FA uh, also so this is FAB and this is FAC okay so this is the magnitude and the direction is given by 4 i hat minus 4 k hat divided by square root of 4 square plus 4 square. Okay? So again this is the magnitude and this is the unit vector of RAB. And so this is the first term. For second term we have 120 Newton force. And the unit vector is 4 i hat plus 2 j hat plus 4 k hat and we divide by the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared. 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared. So this is a 4 let me just clarify it for you. Okay. So, uh, and these two terms have to be added up. We can just add these terms up uh, using uh, the simple vector algebra. So, I hope you guys can solve that part on yourself. I am not going to simplify this result for you because this is too trivial to spend time on. I hope you guys can do it on your own. Okay. So let's move on. So the next concept and the last concept in this chapter is the concept of a dot product. Okay. And which is also called a scalar product. So uh, what is a dot product? It is a product between two vectors whose resultant is a scalar okay that is why it is also called a scalar so it is not a product in the usual sense uh, that uh, usually when we make the product of two vectors we should get another vector but this we do a product of two vectors and we get a scalar number at the end okay uh, so uh, again so the basic form of a dot product is a dot b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos of theta 
uh, I am going to uh, go through these this dot product quickly because I understand that you guys already know uh, about dot products in your previous courses and in your uh, FSE. Okay, so the basic laws that dot products satisfy. First of all, dot products are commutative. What does that mean? That a dot b is same as b dot a, and the multiplication of a scalar is the same so you can just multiply a with the dot product of a dot b or you can multiply the a with one vector first or you can multiply this scalar a with the second vector first it would make no difference and it's still the same and the second and the third property is that of a distributive law that if a is dotted with the sum of two vectors b and d it is same as that doing a dot b plus a dot d so it is distributive uh, in the usual sense okay and uh, the most important formula for our case is that when we do a dot b and we have two cartesian vectors that means that the cartesian vectors are given into in the form of ax plus ay ax i hat plus ay k hat plus az uh, ay j hat plus az k hat so in that form a dot b simply uh, means that we multiply the x component with the x component, the y component with the y component and the z component with the z component. This is what we call the Cartesian vector form. Okay. So why is dot product useful? So the first reason why the dot product is useful is that we can use it to find the angle between two vectors. Okay. So, so let us assume that we have an axis here. So this is one axis, second one and the third one, okay. And so we have x, y and z axis, okay. And so we have two arbitrary vectors, one vector is going in this direction, the other one is going in this direction, this vector has its uh, projection here this vector maybe has a projection somewhere here uh, so in general we to if we want to find the angle between these two vectors it's not a tr easy problem okay because these do uh, do not lie in any of the basic planes so this vector uh, is is not in x z plane and this one is not in z y plane so in three dimensions measuring angles is not as simple as it looks okay so but we can simply use the dot product so if i know this vector a and this vector b and i know both of these vectors in their cartesian form i can just do a dot b is equal to a b cos of theta where this is the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B and this is the angle theta. To find the angle theta, I can simply do uh, cos inverse of A dot B divided by A B. Okay? So this is an easy way to find the angles even in three dimensions. Okay? So angles in two dimensions are easy. To find angles between three dimensional vectors is tricky, but it is uh, very trivial if we use the dot product. Okay. The second thing w we use dot products for is to calculate the parallel and the perpendicular components of a vector. Okay. So, uh, a few properties that you might already have seen that if we have a dot b equals 0. And we know that A and B, these vectors themselves are not equal to 0. This implies that A and B are perpendicular. So, in other words, that the angle between them cos of theta should be equal to 0, which implies. that theta is equal to pi by 
टू और नाइन्टी डिग्रीज ओके सो वी कैन यूज डॉट प्रोडक्ट टू फाइंड द पेंडिकुलर कंपोनेंट्स और द पैरल कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ अ वेक्टर ओके सो इफ वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड सो लेट लुक एट एन अदर एग्जाम्पल सो लेट मी जस्ट गेट रिड ऑफ एवरी थिंग आई हैव डन सो फार एंड लेट्स लुक एन अदर एग्जाम्पल सो लेट्स एज्यूम दैट वी हैव अ वैक्टर वी ए एंड वी हैव एन अदर वैक्टर बी ओके सो वट इफ आई वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द पैरल कंपोनेंट सो पैरल कंपोनेंट of a with respect to b so i want to find the component of a which is parallel to b okay how can we do that so first of all we can uh, this is going to be equal to a dot b and it has to be in the direction of b itself so this a dot b gives the magnitude and then the unit vector in the b direction so to simplify this we get a dot b times the vector b over magnitude of b so this gives the parallel component of a with respect to b uh and if we subtract this component from a that gives us the perpendicular component okay so a minus the parallel component is equal to the perpendicular component okay so again this point would get more clear when we solve more and more examples but i think the basic uh, concept is has been passed along um so the summary of dot product is first of all uh, dot product is used to determine the angle between two vectors or the projection of a vector in a specified direction with this is what we call the parallel component if vectors a and b are expressed in cartesian vector forms then a dot b simply is ax times bx plus ay times by plus az times bc okay uh and so theta the angle between the two is just cos inverse of a dot b over ab again these are the magnitudes and this is the dot product and this is the magnitude of the projection vector as we have discussed earlier okay so uh so now these are some examples so we would go through this these examples uh, uh determine the magnitude of the projection of the force f on to u and v axis so we want to find the projection of this force f over this u vector and over this v vector okay this is part of the book so uh, example 2.14 you guys can look up the example and see if you can understand it uh um, so we would discuss this example if you have any questions in our question and answer session okay i hope this uh, it it's not very difficult and most of you have already seen it so i won't spend too much time on it okay and so there are some other examples that have that i have added from the book and so we would solve these examples during the regular class lectures okay um so to summarize the whole of this chapter number 2 there were many concepts first of all uh, a vector is a quantity which has a magnitude and which has a direction and an arrow represents the direction of the vector okay so if we multiply or divide this vector with um a scalar the length of the vector only changes the direction stays the same if we multiply with a negative number that the direction also reverses okay if we want to add 
two vectors then the addition of two vectors is done using the head to tail rule or the parallelogram method where the resultant vector is nothing but the uh, you we draw a vector from one of these vectors from head of the first to the uh, and uh, the tail of the second goes on the head of the first and then we can add even more of these vectors okay so then we uh, this was to add vectors what happens when we want to uh, resolve a vector into its components so we can choose an axis and then we can resolve this vector into its x component and y component and even in three dimensions we can resolve this vector into its x y and z components okay then we also learned the concept of a unit vector which is nothing but a vector in the direction of f but which has a unit length which has a magnitude of equal to 1 so u is just the vector f divided by its magnitude okay and the third thing that we learned was position vectors these are vectors between two points in space and so the position vector between r from a to b is nothing but xb minus xa plus yb minus ya plus z, uh, i hat so i hat component is xb minus xa j hat component is yb minus ya and k hat component is zb minus za as we discussed in this video okay so the last concept we discussed in this chapter was that of a dot product and so a dot product is if we want if we know the angle and if we know the magnitude we can use this formula if we know these vectors into Cartesian form, then we can use this formula. And the two main uses of dot product is first of all, we can use a dot product to find the angle between those two vectors. And the second is we can use it to measure the parallel or perpendicular components of that vector. Okay. <clears throat> so this is it for chapter number two. Um, I hope to see you guys in chapter number 3 inshallah